the all new iPad Pro 12.9 inch, 1TB, 16GB of RAM and the powerful M1 chip. The 2021 model looks just like the others but with new features, better and brighter screen, more power, bigger battery and the powerful M1 chip. The Wi-Fi model comes with the iPad itself and an EU or US wall charger depending on where you live, a very short charging cable and the papers that we never read. But how is it? Is it good? And is it really that much better and faster than the 2018 model when it comes to editing a video with Luma Fusion? This video is not going to be the ordinary review. We're going to put the M1 1TB 16GB of RAM 12.9 inch iPad Pro up against the older but still powerful 2018 256GB 12.9 inch iPad Pro in a battle of Luma Fusion video editing. Which iPad can keep up with the two massive projects that I have in LumaFusion which will freeze and should you actually upgrade to the latest model if you have a 2018 or 19 iPad Pro. Let's start with the latest project that I currently made. This is a massive gaming edit where I have two layers of the same sequence stacking on top of each other, effects added to each clip such as Bloom Big, Gaussian Blur, Luma Key, a LUT, a color preset and motion blur. And there's also massive speed changes throughout the sequence here which really puts stress on LumaFusion and the iPad. And on top of that, 4K overlays and all the clips are 4K cinema which has a resolution of 4096 by 1714 stacking into layers. So let's take a look at that sequence and see which one can keep up and this is also put to the preview quality of best and we're gonna do one at the fastest later on before we head over to the second massive project. This playback in real time with the 2018 and 2020 one model iPad we could see that the 2018 was falling behind and had uh, a lot more hiccups than the 2021 had now this is the best quality let's turn it down to the fastest quality of Luma Fusion to see if there is any difference between the playback with the 2018 and 2020 one model Now to be honest, I didn't see that much difference between these two iPads doing the playback in the fastest preview quality in LumaFusion. Now this is a massive project and it puts a lot of stress on LumaFusion and the iPad because there's so much going on and there's so much movement in the preview screen and there's color grading, there's effects and all of that and I think to be honest that the iPad 2018 kept up with the 2021 model and at one point I feel like it had a slightly 
better playback performance than the 2021 model. Let me know in the comment section below your thoughts on this. You can also play it back one more time if you want to see uh, the difference again or maybe do a slower playback speed here on YouTube so you can see the difference between these two. Uh, but Anyway, this is a really massive project. Let's go over to another one, uh, which is also a massive project, but it has um, less effects and things applied to each clip. But it's a travel sequence, so it includes a, a lot more sound effects and sound designs and up and down in the uh, muffle audio and the transitions and all of that. So this is going to be in the fastest preview uh, settings as well. So let's take a look at that sequence and that project. Project. Well, 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 I didn't see much of a difference between these two uh, playbacks. I mean, there was a little bit here and a little bit there on both iPads. The 2018 really kept up with the M1 iPad. Now, one of the main things is, you know, on this channel is mobile video editing, its workflow and its, um, you know, how to make things faster, how to make things more convenient for ourselves when we are editing videos and, and so on. Because nowadays everything, you know, we want everything to go very, very fast. And that's also one of the main reasons I wanted to pick up an M1 to see if everything goes faster because the render, the playback, do I have less issues? And uh, will I spend less time going back to the timeline or back to the beginning of the timeline and then push play? And then when it starts lag, go back again and play again. And will this brand new iPad prevent me from having those issues? Uh, and one more thing we're gonna test out as well is export. We're gonna export the gaming edit because it's two, roughly two minutes and 40. There's effects added to the entire project. Every single clip has an effect. So it's really gonna put uh, the render export to the test. Uh, so I think we're just gonna put the iPad side by side and let's go into the render process to see how much faster the M1 iPad is because I know for sure it's gonna be faster, but I'm gonna be surprised if it's not. So let's, uh, let's head over to the export. So here we have both of the iPads side by side. We have the uh, 2021 model here. I'm just gonna confirm that for myself. Yes, this is the latest model with the M1 chip and this is the 2018 model. Now we have the same two projects open here. It's Final Gaming Edit 4, Final Gaming Edit 4 and both of them are 2 minutes and 36.23 seconds long. So we're gonna move over straight away to the export uh, section here and we're gonna export this as the basic settings here. We have 4K, 4K, 100 megabits per second, 100 megabits per second, and the size of this is going to be 1.5 gigabytes. So let's move over to the export button here. I'm gonna tap these simultaneously here, one, two, and three.
have the iPad Pro with the M1 chip being slightly faster than the 2018 one. Now, I wouldn't personally buy this for the render speed because you're gonna wait for the YouTube compression when you upload your video to YouTube anyway, so in the long run, they might be equally fast. Now, if you're gonna render this to show off to friends and so on, well, yeah, well, it doesn't really matter, does it? So for render speed, it's faster and... Uh, I don't know, I wouldn't buy it for the render speed. Let me know in the comment section below your thoughts on that. And this is, again, a huge project, a massive project with a lot of effects and all of that. So this is also something which you might not have when you edit your videos. If you're edit gaming videos and so on, yes, of course, you're gonna have something like this. But if you just do the average vlog or the average video, which I upload to my channel, you upload to your channel and, and so on, uh, I'm not sure if the render is gonna be, you know, that huge of a difference. Uh, the longer it is, the more effects it is, the more handy the M1 will be over an earlier uh, model. Now, you're gonna save a lot of cash if you go for a refurbished or an older iPad. I would suggest 2018, 2019, if you don't really need the M1 iPad. Now we did a render of these two. The M1 is the fastest one. And uh, when it comes to the playback, these two have, you know, it's, it's the same same if you go with the fastest preview screen. Like I said earlier, this is also something that I recommend. So if we take a look at the scrubbing experience as well, when we're at the timeline of LumaFusion, we still have the same two projects, the gaming edits here. So if we just uh, scrub through uh, from the beginning here and then just scrub through uh, to the right to see which is most responsive, uh, I'm gonna say they are quite equal to be honest. And I don't I don't see much of a difference between this. You, it's not like you're gonna scrub super fast, you're probably gonna scrub fairly slow to see the clips and so on. And it goes pretty smooth on the M1 and it goes pretty smooth on the 2018 model as well. So not a massive difference there. And this is one of the key things when I get a new iPad and when I get things which is helping my workflow and things that I use for work, basically. Then I want my experience to be smooth. I want to have a smooth workflow and I don't want to have any lag whatsoever. So the less lag, the more I'm willing to pay for that. So if we take a look at these two sequences here and if we also go over to settings just to see the playback or the preview preferences here, it says to fastest and fastest on both. If we go over to best on both of the iPads here, uh, let's see, and we go to the beginning again, and we scrub through, let's do one first, so we're gonna go with the 2018 model, and the scrubbing experience, it's a little bit more lag to it, and it's jumping a little bit more than the fastest one, of course, because this has the optimized preview quality to it. Now, if you go over to the M1 here, the scrubbing experience is so much smoother, even in the best settings. And Luma Touch has optimized Luma Fusion so good for the iPads and for the iPhones. So no matter what type of iPad you have, as long as you can run Luma Fusion, you should be able to to edit fine. And I've also done testing with this earlier, where I used uh, an iPad Mini 2012 model. 13, 6, 2016 model maybe, and it was running perfectly, uh, even with 4K footage, but it wasn't supportive of the 4K, f well actually that's wrong. I couldn't import 4K footage because it didn't support that, but on the first generation iPad, or second generation iPad 9.7 inch or something like that. I also have a video, I will leave that down in the description below, where I was editing multiple layers of 4K and it was perfectly smooth. So I'm not sure if upgrading is the best thing for you. If you want it, of course, but if you wanna save some money and maybe put that into getting more storage, or if you don't need the Thunderbolt connection, I mean, this Samsung T5 is working perfectly with the uh, 2018 model, also works perfectly with 
the M1 and with the M1 we could get something like the Samsung X5 which is the world's fastest SSD I believe but it's very expensive as well. Maybe the solution for you if you're not willing to upgrade to the M1 would be to get a 2018-2019 model with more storage and then maybe something like an SSD T5, T7 on the side as well which will then put you to the same price range as the M1 iPad but you will still get more storage and you will get an external SSD drive as well. So that's basically my conclusion of this. I'm not sure if the upgrade to the M1 was worth it. I'm not gonna return it because, you know, I'm putting these iPads to the test and I crashed them a lot because of the workflow with LumaFusion that I have, everything. So I'm not gonna throw this away. I'm gonna keep it and I'm gonna do a full in-depth review later on when we see iPadOS 15 to see if anything has changed and to see if, uh, you know, my experience with it and if it's still worth it, not worth it and so on. So I feel it's at this point it's an unnecessary upgrade even with the screen I mean the black levels are true black so when when your screen is black it's black and when it's black on the 2018 model it's not really that black it's grayish, grayish black or very bright black. Some, something like that. Uh, so the, the overall changes from the 18 to the 21 M1, for me as a content creator and editor in LumaFusion, I'm not seeing a big upgrade. I would still consider the 2018 model because it's lightning fast and uh, if you're gonna upgrade from a smaller iPad, you might as well go with a, a refurbished one to save some money if that's that's something that you would consider, or you can go with maybe, um, I don't know, I don't know. I'm just, I'm just a little bit shocked, a little bit shocked of how the, the, you know, the differences between these two iPads wasn't really that much as I expected because there was a huge hype around the M1 uh, chip and the M1 iPad, 16 gigabytes of RAM should, you know, out edit this 2018 model, but it just means that Luma Touch has optimized LumaFusion for basically any iPad. So you're not going wrong with an older iPad and you're not going wrong with uh, a newer iPad. So it's completely up to you if you are looking for an iPad. This is my honest opinion about these. I would rather stick with the 18 and then get uh, maybe a two terabyte, one terabyte SSD disk so I can save all of my things here and I can, you know, if I had different devices, I can move them over. Uh, and uh, yeah, that's, yeah, I'm still disappointed. Still disappointed. Now, I still have a lot of testing to do with this M1 iPad. Only been using it for roughly two days, if not less, to make this comparison. Playing around in the timeline and uh, just, you know, see if there is any major differences uh, to the workflow that I have. And at this point, it's, it's just minor. So... If you want to save some bucks, go for an older one, uh, probably refurbished if you can get hold of a new one, which is 2018-19 model. Now, that's going to be the end of this uh, review and testing as well. Let me know down in the comment section below what your thoughts are and if you are considering getting an M1 iPad and what type of storage that you are looking for. If you are sure that you're going to get one, uh, there is an affiliate link down in the description below for Amazon, which is also helping out this channel. If you consider getting one from Amazon, I earn a small amount of fee if you decide to go through my link. So that's going to be the end of today's video. Make sure to hit that subscribe button if you haven't already, and I'll see you in the next video.